We are, we are super excited right now. Uh, New Hope is on track to break the all-time ever speed the light giving in one year. Uh, we just got a message from our DYD, Adam, who's here this morning. And uh, right now, year to date, we're at $521,000 for S Speed the Light student missions giving. And, and we want to thank you. Thank you guys for supporting that. The all-time record, I believe, is $550,000. So we're pushing to beat it. We're hoping uh, that we, we can pass that. Not because we want to be number one. Not because we want to give the most, even though we do want to give the most. But we don't give the most to give the most. We give the most to help the most. And, and to m make a bigger effect in the world and to get people to hear about Jesus. So this Wednesday night, our student offering, uh, just in a one-time offering for students, we have a goal for them to give $25,000 in just one offering. So... Um, um, be praying for that, that God will, will do a miracle in that. And, and find some students, support some students. Um, we were raising up the next givers, the next uh, people who will, who will be in the church. You know, this is the, the, the next church, and we want to raise up people who are excited to give, who are passionate about people knowing Jesus. Um, so thank you for investing in them, for seeing lost people found. But we're in a series, like you heard, called It's a Wonderful Life, and uh, I get the fun, exciting message to preach to you this morning on busyness, right? Anybody find themselves busy, especially during Christmas season, right? That's okay. We'll pray for you. I'm just saying, but, but, but we find ourselves busy, and as I was preparing this message, I sat down with an expert on busyness and interviewed him um, just about what that looks like, and, and we recorded it, and I have it for you to watch here this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Zach. This is Barrett, and this is Breakfast Talks with Barrett. All right, can you tell us your name? Hi. Hi. What's your name? What's your name? What, what's your name? Barrett. Barrett. Okay. How old are you, Barrett? Two. Two? Can you count to two? One, two, two. One, two, three. You went above and beyond. What are you eating this morning? Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch? Yeah. Is that your favorite? Yeah. Yeah? All right, Barrett. So on Sunday mornings, we're in a series called It's a Wonderful Life. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. What's it about? Sure. I think it's a I think it's a different movie. Have you seen It's a Wonderful Life? Yeah. Can you tell me what that movie's about? about? Yeah. I think it's a different movie than what I'm thinking of. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Christmas? The stockings? Yeah. Yeah? Do you like the Christmas tree? Yeah. Can you sing me a Christmas song? <laughs> what is something you want for Christmas? Dad. What's a gift that you want for Christmas? Dad. You just want to be with me? We want Dad. You want Dad? Aww. Give me a hug. Dad. Give me a hug. Aww. So today we're talking about busyness. Are, yeah. you, are you busy? No. No? Are you lazy? Whoa. You just right in the middle? Yeah. Yeah? Can you define busyness for me? No. What, what does it mean to be busy? College. College? Yeah. That's a, that's a good example. What's another time someone is busy? Okay, what else? College. Um, 
Why do you think people are so busy? In college. Because they're in college? Yeah. What's another reason besides college? Yeah. They're under the table? Yeah. Why do you think Americans are more busy than any other country? Dad. Dad? Yeah. Do you think I'm busy? Yeah. Do you think you're busy? Yeah. Is mom busy? No. No? So Barrett and Dad are, are busy, but Mom's not? No. Is Baby Bro busy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. No? So you're busy, I'm busy, Mom's not busy, Baby Bro's not busy. No. More milk. More milk. More milk? Alright, can you tell everybody bye? Bye. No, tell them bye. Bye. Say see you later. See you later. So that's my son, Barrett. We had some fun making some videos like that, and uh, I hope you learned something about busyness. If you're in, where's the college kids at? You're busy apparently, and very busy because you keep sitting in college. But uh, that's my oldest son, Barrett. He's two years old. And if you did not hear, my wife and I, we had our second son. His name is Wells Jeffrey, and he is three weeks old. And we are, we are loving having two boys. It's a lot of fun. Uh, with Barrett, when he was born, uh, Marin had an emergency C-section, and I wasn't able to be in there for any of it. I missed all of it. But for Wells, it was planned. I was able to be there, experience everything. I didn't pass out, all right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but as I was, as I was in there, there's, I realized there's a lot of people in the, in the operating room. Like there's all sorts of people in there. And everybody's got their job. Like one, one person's job was literally there just counting regs the whole time. And I asked them, why, why do you count regs? And they were like, we don't want to sew one up inside of her. And I was like, that is disgust. Like that, no thank you. Right? But they all had their jobs. And what I, what I recognized is that when it came time for the delivery, when it came time to, to get the baby out, they were all completely focused. They're all, they all, their full engagement was in that moment. And how, how inappropriate, how unprofessional would it have been if in the middle of the doctor getting the baby out, if, if she's like, she's pulling on the baby and then she just stops, she takes out her phone and she calls her friends like, hey, what are we doing this weekend, right? That like, who would, if you were in there, you would be mad at that doctor, right? That would be inappropriate. Why? Because it was a moment of urgency. All of their attention was in this moment of urgency. And what I've found as I've, as I've looked at our culture, our, our society, is that the only time that we have people's full attention is in a moment of urgency. We're going from an urgent moment to an urgent moment. And, and I think that we're, we're forsaking the important moments for urgent moments. And there's a difference between something being urgent and important. And I think God's got some important things to speak to you. God has some important things for your life, but we are so busy with all these other things. We aren't, we aren't taking time to rest. We're, we're so just in this busyness of, of the holiday season, in the busyness of work with our family, that, and we aren't taking time to rest, that we're missing important things, and we're just finding ourselves jumping from one urgent thing to the next urgent thing. We're for, forsaking the most important thing out there. And if you would turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2, that's where we'll be reading at this morning. But as I was thinking about busyness, and I was thinking about the, the story of Christmas, can you imagine if, if the shepherds were too busy to come see Jesus? right? The most important thing that they were called to do, can you imagine if they're like, ah, we got all these sheep we got to take care of, we can't make it. Or the wise men, if they were too busy that they couldn't have done it. I think of the innkeeper, right? All the busyness is going on. There's so many urgent things happening, and there's people all over the place. And he had the opportunity to host the Savior of the world, probably the most important thing that would have ever happened, the, the, it knocking on his door. But he was so distracted with urgent things that he missed the most important thing. And I wonder how many times are we distracted? Are we, are we stuck in the busyness? There's urgent things that are going on that have our attention and we're missing the most important thing. And I, I believe that, that this is not how God intended us to live. He didn't intend us to, to be in this busyness and going from one thing to the next and so distracted. He doesn't want us moving from urgent thing to urgent thing, but rather to steward our time. 
and, and steward what he's calling us to do. And if I was to ask everybody here, like, hey, do you want to miss important things for urgent things? No one would be like, yeah, I want to miss the important things in my life. No one would say that. So I started to look, why do we do this? Why do we miss important things? Why are we so, uh, why does this happen so much in our culture? And the first thing is this, is that I think we're overworked, right? We're, we're, we're an overworked nation. It's kind of ironic that, that our nation was settled by people called Puritans who came with this mindset that they're going to have a Sabbath society, meaning everybody is mandated that one day a week that they take off, that it's a day of rest. But now, on average, America works 137 more hours a year than Japan. That's a long time. On average, 160 more hours a year than Great Britain. And 499 more av- hours a year on average than France. And they are lazy, right? <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, I want to move to France. That sounds nice. All right, we'll, we'll talk about, about laziness, but, but we're overworked. We're working way more than any other, other country. And I think that that's turned to so many of us worshiping our work. And how do you know if you worship your work? It's what are you finding your identity in? Are you finding your identity in your work? If so, then, then maybe that's a thing that you've been worshiping. Or are you finding your identity in God? But it's this overworked nation that's only finding itself having focus on urgent things and missing important things. And we're in this series, it's, it's a wonderful life. And I think so many of us are chasing this American dream. Like, I want, the, I want to have a wonderful life. I'm going to chase the American dream. But the only way you'll find having a wonderful life is following God. It is, it's taking time to be in the important things setting aside, taking time to rest. So it's not just that we're overworked, that we're missing important things, it's that we're tired. Anybody here tired this morning? Like, we, we are literally sleepy, right? First service was a little more sleepy than you guys. You guys have it together a little bit more. But before the, the light bulb was invented, the average amount of sleep that someone would get in a night was 10 hours. Some of you are like, wow, sounds amazing, right? Like, it would, it would get dark, and they'd be like, hey, what should we do? Let's go to bed, right? Maybe some of you are like that, and I'm a little jealous of that. But since the light bulb was invented, it's now 6.7 hours on average that we sleep in a night. Some of you are like, wow, that sounds amazing, right? My wife right now with having a baby. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that, that all right, we got to get back to having 10 hours of, of sleep a night, and that's what we need to do, and maybe that is the case for you. But what I'm suggesting is that we need to take a look at, at how are we spending our time. Where's our time going to? especially in the evening. If you're like me, to be honest, too much of my time goes to Netflix at nighttime, right? I could be in my word. I could just be spending one-on-one time with my wife. But, but where are, where's our time going? Where, and, and so much of it is just getting wasted, right? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, go to bed. Don't do it right, like, tell them now, but don't go to bed right now, unless you really need to sleep. So one, we're overworked. Two, we're tired. And number three, we're just distracted. We're distracted. There's all sorts of distractions. 1,617 times is how much they say we touch our phone in a day. 1,617. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. So we're touching our phone more times than there are minutes in a day. And they say the, the national average is three hours a day that we spend on our phone. Three hours a day. That's the, that's the average. Some of you are like, I'm only on my phone 10 minutes. Some of you are like, I'm on my phone for seven hours. But three hours is the average. And it's not just phones, but it's TV. They say the national average of TV watched is five hours a day. Wow. So between cell phone use and TVs, we're working a full-time job, right? There, there's distractions that are, that are right there in front of us. And we think that in these moments of, of scrolling through Instagram, of scrolling through Facebook, of going down that dark hole of all the Facebook video, you know what I'm talking about, like you watch one video, and then it pulls up a similar one, and you're just laughing, it, right? We get in those moments of scrolling through social media, or we get in those moments of just lounging and watching Netflix, and in the moment we think, like, I'm being refreshed right now, like I'm just relaxing. But I want to ask you, does those, do those things really refresh your soul? Do those things leave you like, ah, like I, I'm, I'm so ready to go into the day. I'm so ready to, to, to do what God is calling me to do today. And the result of us being overworked, tired, and distracted is that we are finding ourselves anxious. 39% of Americans say that they are more anxious this year than they were last year. And I, I think something needs to change with this. And you're like, I know what needs to change. Like God should have made it 30-hour day, not a 24-hour day. Like I need more time in my day. 
But I don't think we need more time. I think we just need to learn to steward our time. How, how are we going to use our time? And I love that the Bible, it tells us this. And, and I love what we're going to be reading here. And, and we see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then he goes on six-day spree of just creating everything around us. And then on the seventh day, he rests. On the seventh day, he rests. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all of the creating that had been done. So we see God, he, he works for six days, and then on the seventh day, he rests. On the seventh day, he stops. He pauses. I think it's important for you to realize that God didn't rest. He didn't stop because he was tired. Okay, he, he wasn't tired. God's not sitting up in heaven like some overworked Santa who's way behind on all these emails and can't get to all of our prayer requests, okay? He wasn't tired, but it says that he was finished. He stopped because he was finished. If you read all throughout what he creates, he, he creates something, and then what does he say after he creates it? It is good. It is good. It is good. I don't know about you, but, but for me, I, I can be a perfectionist, Right? And I work on something, and I step back, I think I'm done, and then I'm like, ah, that's, that's not quite, I, I, I could do better. And I go and I work on a little bit more, and I step back, and it's, ah, it, it can be better. And I just, I never feel like I'm fully done, but we see that here, God, he, he creates something, and he says, it is good. It, it, it's finished. Now hear me for a second. I'm not saying that what God created isn't good, but what I am saying is that God could have created more, Right? He, he could have created, he's God. He, he could have created more. Like he, he could have made little puppies that like fit in the size of your hand that just float around singing to you all day. He could have, he could have created that, right? But he stopped. He stepped back. He looked at it and said, it is good. It's finished. I, I'm, I'm done working on this. I love that right there off the beginning, at the beginning of the Bible, God's showing us how we should work, how we should live our life. Look at it, work on it, say, hey, hey, you go to work, you work on your thing, you work on that project, you give everything you got. I believe Christians should be the hardest workers out there because everything we do, we do for the glory of God. But you give it all you got, and you step back, say, it's, it's good. I'm going to go home. I'm going to rest. I, I, it's time for me to step back. I, I'm not going to keep my hands on this. God, he, he looks at it and says, it, it's good. What's awesome is that on the sixth day, God creates you and me. Right? And he doesn't say, it's good. What does he say? It's very good. Someone needs to hear me this morning that God says that you are very good. God says that you are very good. And if he says that, that we are very good, maybe you should quit criticizing his work. Some of us are so critical of ourselves. Looking at ourselves saying, I, I'm not good enough. I don't, I don't look good enough. I, I don't talk well enough. I we just are so critical of ourselves. But God, he says that you are very good. It's not, it's not your bank account that defines you. It's not the amount of friends that you have. It's not your education. It's not your job. It's nothing that you've done. But God says that you are very good, meaning it's not my accomplishment that defines me. It's his announcement over my life. God says you are very good good. So he works for six days. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's very good. And then he rests. He Sabbaths. If God thought it was important to rest, maybe we should think it's important to rest, right? If the, if the creator of the whole world said, I need to rest, maybe, maybe we should look at it and say, I need to rest. He, he works for six days, and then he takes a day off. He, he rests. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you that you serve a God who created the weekend, right? Come on, that, that deserves like a praise God for the weekend, right? God could have created us and just been like, all right, we're going to work all the time, but you serve a God who created the weekend, who cares about your rest. I don't know if you noticed when I was reading this, but it's not only did he create the day of rest, but he made it holy. He made that day holy. This is the first time in the Bible that we see the word holy, Holy means to be set apart. He, he, we're setting ourselves apart on that day. We're taking time to, to rest. He, he's recognizing that, hey, if you, if you take one day off, if you take a, a day to rest, the other six days, they're going to have purpose. They're going to be more meaningful. They're going to have your full engagement. If you, if you take that moment to step aside and take that time to rest, it's like music. Every good piece of music, it has rhythm to it, right? 
It, it, has, it has a break. It has a pause in it. In the Psalms, we see that there's this thing in there that says Selah, which means to, to pause, to ponder, to praise God in that moment. Work without rest is like music without a rhythm. It's like a psalm without a Selah. It, it, it goes hand in hand. We work for six days. We rest for one. Man was created on the sixth day. And then God on the seventh day created rest. Did you, did you catch that? Man's first day on this world was a day of rest. First day was a day of rest. And as I was reading this, I was like, wow, this is, this is so cool. I want you to look at this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. It says, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. How cool is that? I don't think, I don't think you got it. Go to the next one. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. Do you get it? No? All right, one more. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Are you catching this? It starts with rest. The Jews at this time, they followed the lunar calendar, which meant that when the sun goes down, new 24 hours begins. So we right now, we look at, all right, I wake up in the morning, I go to work so I can come home and rest. But he was looking at it like, I'm going to rest so I can go to work. Rest is important. Rest is valuable. God cares so much about rest that the first day that we had on earth was a day of rest. That we start our day with a moment of rest. Rest, it brings strength to us. Rest, it brings focus. It brings clarity. It brings us being more engaged in the moments. If you're tired of jumping around from one urgent thing to the next urgent thing, maybe we should take a moment and pause and reflect and rest. Spend time with our creator, Sabbath. God wants you to rest. When we see the the Ten Commandments, the fourth commandment is this, Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall, do, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor male or female servant nor animals or any foreigners residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Holy. You know what's crazy to me? I've been in church my whole life. I've been at New Hope for most of my life. And I've yet to have a moment where I'm standing there and someone walks up to me and is like, hey, Pastor Zach, guess what? Last night, I made an idol and I worshiped it. It was amazing, right? No one's coming up to me bragging to me about breaking the Ten Commandments. No one's like, Pastor Zach, guess what? Yesterday, I killed a dude. It was awesome, right? No, if that happened, I'd be like, someone please arrest this guy. Get this guy out of here, right? No one's coming up to me bragging about breaking the Ten Commandments except for one. How many times have I been somewhere or been in church And someone comes up to me and says, I'm asking how they're doing. They're like, oh, man, I'm so busy. Man, I'm I'm working nonstop. Man, I'm making money, though. Like, like I'm I'm going up the ladder, but I'm busy. I'm working nonstop. Man, we're, we're bragging about breaking God's commandment here. I think it's important to look, if you look at all the, the commandments, all 10 of them, this is the only one that starts with remember. It's not remember, don't murder people. Like, we don't need to be reminded of that normally, I hope. But I think God saw this and thought, this one might be one we forget. This might be something that, that we push back, that, that we get so busy with life that, that life just kind of consumes us. The Sabbath, hear me, the Sabbath is coming. It's, it's, it's coming for you one way or another. It's either going to, you're going to take time and you're going to rest, and that's coming for you, or you're not going to rest, and it's going to stop you. Right? We're either choosing to stop or something's going to stop us. The Sabbath, it will either be your delight or it'll be your discipline. It's either going to be something we enjoy or it's going to be something that, that, that stops us totally. Right? It's coming for us. We need to learn to rest. And I think Christmas time, this is such a valuable time to talk about it. We get so stuck in the busyness of, of Christmas parties, of getting all the presents, of, of decorating the house, putting lights up inside, putting lights up outside, wrapping all the presents, making sure the house smells like Christmas. Anybody like my house where it's like, the house has to smell like a pine tree during Christmas, right? And, but we get so caught up in all these busy things that I think we miss the most important thing, that Jesus came from heaven to earth not just to, to do good things, but to die on a cross, knowing that that would be the case, to die on a cross for you and for me so that we could spend eternity in heaven with him. 
So I wanna just show you a couple things this morning of, of how, can we, how can we learn to rest? How, how can we learn to Sabbath? And I think there's two very important things that we remember when it comes to resting, when it comes to, to, to honoring the Sabbath. And the first is this, is rest without work is lazy. Right? Some of us are like, oh, God wants me to rest? All right, I'm just going to sleep in all day. I'm going to take a nap. I'm, I'm going to do this. But we see that the Sabbath, it assumes work. It assumes that we're working, right? Work for six days, take a day off. Work for six days, take a day off. There's a pattern to this. And if you're not working, the Bible says that it's lazy. Why do we need to work? Why shouldn't we be lazy? Because we know that a lazy life results in us being restless, and depression, anxiety, those things, they'll creep in on us if we're, if we're restless. They'll haunt you. But I think the American mindset is this, that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work, work, work. I'm going to work really hard now so that someday I can retire. Someday I can just sit on the beach and not have any stress, not have any worry. And I'm just going to sit there and life will be good once I get to there. But for now, I'm just working, working, working. I read this article by Forbes this last week that says suicide rate is the highest among older adults. I think that's because we put all of our identity in our work and we're working and working and working and we have purpose and then it stops and we don't know what to do. Listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that, hey, you can never retire, you need to work that job your entire life. What I'm saying is just because your job do- is done doesn't mean the work is done. God still has a purpose for you. God's still calling you out to do things, serve somewhere. Listen, I don't care if, if, you're, if you're 60 years old and you want to be a youth leader, come serve, come have purpose. What's God calling you to do? In Genesis 2.15, this is before the fall of man, and we see that man is, is in the garden. It's this place called Eden, and it's paradise. In Genesis 2.15, it says, the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden. This is the closest thing to heaven on earth. It's paradise. And he put him in the garden in paradise to do what? To work it. Wait a second. Why is there work in paradise? Why is there work in heaven on earth? God's calling us to work. He knows that, that there is work to be done. Some of you are like, I can't wait till I get to heaven and we can just sit around and play our harps all day and eat grapes. It's going to be amazing. But some of you might be a little disappointed to find out that we're going to have jobs in heaven. We're going to work. Just because your job is done doesn't mean the work is done. Work without or rest without work, it's just being lazy. We need to learn to work, six on, one off. But although rest without work is lazy, the opposite is true, is that work without rest is slavery. Work without rest is slavery, and there's this balance of six days on, one day off. I think some of us have become so enslaved to our dreams, so enslaved to to our future, so enslaved to, to this is what I want to do. And we need to learn to balance work and rest. Understand that, that rest, it doesn't happen by default. It only happens by design. Rest doesn't just naturally happen unless you go for so long without resting that it's just, it has to happen. But this is something that we have to design. It's something that we have to, to plan out. Have you ever done like I do sometimes and you forgot to charge your phone overnight? Or you have a wireless charger and it doesn't like fully sit on your charger? And you wake up in the morning and your phone is on, it's got the little red bar on your battery. Anybody ever done that before? Right? Does it ruin your day like it ruins mine? Like all day I'm like trying to find somewhere to plug my phone in. I'm carrying a charger around like some weirdo, you know, always trying to plug my phone in, always trying to to get a little bit more battery. And I think that's where a lot of of us can be. Where we're just so drained that we haven't, we haven't taken that time to rest, then we're, we're looking for it in all these places. And what we find is that we're just going from a moment of urgency to urgency. And, and what you find is that, that you're tired when that happens, right? You're, you're distracted, you're disconnected, you're not fully engaged, nothing has your full attention. You're angry. The way that, that you treat your kids, it's not that your kids are, are that bad, it's that you're that impatient. We're, we're not getting rest, we're not being filled up, we're not getting restored. You're living a life on red, and, and it's, it's draining you. But we need to learn to rest, to recharge. Otherwise, we become a slave. It's a pattern. Six days on, one day off. Maybe you're here, and you're saying, all right, Pastor Zach, well, I, I, I'm going to choose 
to Sabbath. I, I'm going to make that decision today that I'm going to take time to rest. I, I'm going to follow what God told me to do. I'm going to obey his commandments. I'm going to choose this time to rest. But what do I do on that day? Well, I think, I think that's something that you should sit down and you should, you should write out. And not out of legalism, like this is what I can do, this is what I can't do on this day, right? But out of love, saying, God, I, I love you so much that I'm going to write this out of, of here's what I want to do on Sabbath. And maybe you're here and, and you spend all day working with your hands. You're working, you're building stuff. Maybe on your Sabbath, it's, it's a time that, that you work your mind a little bit. You read a book. Maybe the opposite, you're, you're sitting at a, at a desk all day, you're running numbers, you're working with your mind. Man, take that time on your Sabbath, rest, do something with your hands, build something. I, I think one thing is certain on our Sabbath, it should be a time that we connect with our Savior, with our Creator, with His creation. We worship Him, we're in His Word, we're getting closer to Him. But as you do that, you're gonna find that, that other things will fall into place of spending time with your family, right? What's important? Spend time with God, spend time with our family. And how many times are we so stuck in a sense of urgency that we miss both of those on a Saturday that we are supposed to have off on Sunday, right? Maybe you, you set aside time to come to church, but then what does the rest of the day look like? Are you busy running around doing stuff? I'm not saying those are bad. Maybe your Sabbath looks like something I'm trying to do. I'm trying to disconnect. Just put my phone in a different room be fully engaged with my, with my family on that time, right? Spend time with God, spend time with my family. And maybe you're like, uh, like I said, maybe you're like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do on my Sabbath. I'm gonna sleep in real late and then I'm gonna sit around and watch football or watch Netflix all day. That sounds like a good day. And that might sound like a good day, but I wanna ask you, is that really refreshing your soul? Is that really connecting you with God, getting you closer with Him? I don't think God told us to take one day off so that we could just lounge out all day and pig out on junk food, right? I think he, he's, he's telling us there's something to this, that if we learn to rest, if we learn to step back from the busyness of life, if we learn to trust him with the one day, some of you guys, it's a trust issue. Like you don't think you can get all your work done in the time that you already have. But I believe if we learn to trust God with that one day, the other six days will fall into place. The other six days, they're, they're gonna have more purpose. If you'd stand all across this room, this morning, I wanna just challenge you this morning in this, in this busy season of, of Christmas, of all this stuff going on, I wanna challenge you, let's slow down. But let's, let's step back. Let's Sabbath, let's take a moment to rest. Let's focus on what's important, not just the urgent, but what's important, connecting with God, that's the most important thing. And here in just a moment, we're gonna spend some time in worship doing just that, just connecting with God. But let's take time to step back. Let's take time to connect with our creator, with his creation. I know there's lots of stuff to do. I know life gets crazy, but would you just trust God with one day and trust that he's gonna make the other six days fall into place, that those other six days, they're gonna have more purpose, that you're gonna be refreshed, restored, and ready to go back. If you just bow your head and close your eyes, I just want you just to talk with God, just you and God right now. I want you to ask him this question, what's distracting me? Maybe you already know what that is. But God, what, what is it that, that's pulling away my attention? And as you're praying through that, I also want you to ask God, God, what, is, what does the Sabbath look like for me? What does rest look like for me? every head bowed and all the eyes closed. I just want to ask you this question this morning. Maybe as you're sitting here this morning, they're going to talk about God who created the world and sent his son Jesus to earth and, and not just to do good things, but to die on a cross for you and for me. And I'm telling you that if you put your trust and your hope in him, that you can spend eternity in heaven with him. He'll bring joy and peace that surpasses understanding. And if that's you this morning and you, and you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, but today you say, Pastor Zach, I'm making that decision today to follow Jesus. I wanna give my life to Jesus and follow him and I will live for him for all my days. If that's you, would you just raise your hand just saying, that's me. This morning I give my life to Jesus. I see your hand. The other question I wanna ask you this is this this morning, is who will commit with me to rest? Who will commit with, with me that I'm gonna, I'm gonna Sabbath, I'm gonna set aside a day that I'm gonna spend with my creator? 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna push aside all the urgent things. I'm gonna focus on the important things and trust that God's gonna take care of the rest. If that's you and you're just making that commit, commitment with me that you're gonna Sabbath, you're gonna choose to rest, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me. I, I'm, I'm choosing to rest. Life is busy, work is crazy. The Christmas season's driving me nuts, but, but I'm choosing right now that, that I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna give God one day of the week and trust that he's gonna take care of the rest. And let me tell you, it's not just giving God one day of the week, but it's giving him parts of every single part of your day. It's turning to him. It's choosing to, to find your strength in him throughout the day. So here's how we're gonna close is I'm gonna pray for you and we're gonna spend time connecting with our creator. We're gonna spend time connecting with God, worshiping him. Right, giving him praise. And in the altars, I encourage you, come forward. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time up here worshiping him. If you need prayer for something, we'll have a prayer team that, that will be right up here in the middle. Come find them. They will pray with you. But let's connect with God. Let, let's choose to find our rest in him. Jesus, I thank you for every person here this morning, that they are not here by accident, that you have them here for a reason. I thank you, God, that, that you created rest, that you don't want us just going from urgent thing to urgent thing, that you don't want us to get stuck and just being busy all the time, but you have a plan and a purpose for us. And if we choose to rest, if we choose to spend time with you, that that becomes more clear. I pray that you would take out distractions that, that we lose you in, Pray that you would take out uh, people that, that are distracting us, things that are distracting us, work that's distracting us, and we'd, we would make a decision today that we're going to Sabbath, we're going to follow you. We give you this time of worship, God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.